Hello guys, in today's video I will upgrade my favorite four wheel electric vehicle from Austria. This vehicle named Jetflyer has two electric motors at 10 kW rated per motor. They are connected on dual mode controller which has two motor outputs at 150 amps 48 volts per channel. The only problem for me is that the maximum speed are too low. From factory they are limited at 45 km. With unlocked controller can reach at 65 km, which for me it's still not sufficient. So in this video I will upgrade this vehicle with two huge ND72530 far driver controllers, which can also reach at 350 amps line current per motor. Now let's start disassembling the vehicle to see what we have from inside. Let's start from the battery. I have replaced the old factory LifePo 4 16S 1P battery pack which was at 48 volts 60 amps to lithium cattle prismatic cells at 3.7 volts 60 amps per cell. Now battery pack has specs of 13S 2P which is 48 volt 120 amps. So now we have twice capacity from the factory old ones and much more discharge rate of 3C at normal rate. As you understand, the maximum current we can get from this battery pack can reach more than 360 amps. About the controller, as I said before, it is a dual motor controller at 150 amps, 48 volts max output for each hub motor. The charger is built in. It is quite large with a huge heatsink. The characteristics are 48 volts, 25 amps, which is estimated at 1200 watts output. So for full charge from 10 to 100% it will need around 6 hours. Next is my 3G CZAP tracker which is connected on my battery for power supply. Here is one of the two hub motors rated at 10 kW at 72 volts. And here is the second one.
As we said, our controller is a 350 amps battery line current. As you can understand, they are huge for our project. I got them big enough because I want a little bit of power space to keep the controllers from the overheating. Luckily the box of the old controller seems to have the same dimensions as our two controllers. And since controllers can't wait to get into the vehicle, let's start the conversion by disassembling the old controller. Here I insulate my supply wiring so they do not short anywhere. I will prefer some electrical tape, but since I don't have one at the moment, I will use paper tape. Here we have the motor wires, yellow, blue and green power phase wires which are quite thick and a pair of hole sensor plugs. In case someone asks me why there are two, the second one is for spare. Here we have again motor wires of the second hub motor.
Here we have the whole sensor cables from the controller. The white wire is the speed sensor, the red wire is the positive pole of the sensors, the black is the negative pole and the blue, green and yellow is the output of the sensors. All fire driver controllers have this specific waterproof plug. And since I don't have a pair of this specific plug, I will solder them straight to the motor sensor wires. As you can see on the sensor wires of the motor, the color of the wires is exactly the same. So there is no chance for a wrong connection. That's it for the first episode of the upgrade guys and see you in the next video.